Hi. Wave State from Korg is one of the most innovative and original digital synths released in recent years. Its wave sequencing engine lets you create textures and rhythmic soundscapes that just aren't possible with any other synth, especially since you can layer up to four of those textures at a time. And its mod matrix lets you interact with these sounds in ways other synths can't touch, with around 5,000 modulation destinations, which isn't as scary as it sounds, I'll explain a bit later in this video. Since it came out, Korg released a few major updates. You can now load up your own samples. An editor lets you use a computer as a larger screen to edit WaveState's presets. And there's a plug-in only native version if you want to avoid the hardware altogether. Now with the release of WaveState SE and Mark II, there are a couple of more options for people who want this engine in standalone form. In this video, I'll briefly cover what's new in WaveState SE and Mark II, compare them both to WaveState Native, the plugin, and then since I already covered WaveState's basic workflow in videos linked below, I'll cover a few more advanced ideas that will help you make the most of this instrument and get an idea of what makes it special. Before I start, a quick disclosure, Cork sent these wave states over for review. No money changed hands, they have no say over the content of this video and don't get to see it before it's published. This channel is funded mainly by viewers who subscribe to exclusive content and book updates on Patreon, YouTube Premium and ads, and price check affiliate links in the description which help the channel regardless of the product you choose to buy. Okay, let's start with the differences between WaveState SE, the Mark II, and the original WaveState. Probably most important is that all the WaveStates, new and old, are fully preset compatible with each other. They sound the same, they have the same exact sound design controls and workflow, and a preset you make on one, or the native plugin for that matter, will work on any of the others. In terms of differences between the hardware versions, on the inside, the new wave states, both SE and the Mark II, have an increased voice count. 96 voices on the Mark II and 120 voices on the SE, as opposed to 64 on the Mark I. Whether or not that matters depends on the presets you choose to create or play. A note in a single multi-sample based layer takes up only one voice, but when you start using wave sequencing, which is a lot of the point of this synth, each layer uses up to two voices per note. So for example, in this patch, I've got three layers. And if I go into utility, you'll see that pressing a single key uses six voices. We've got three layers, three wave sequencing layers, each using up two voices. So of course, the more notes I play, the more voices I'll use up. Let's maybe flip through the presets and look for all the layers to light up. So say for example, in this one, one note takes up eight voices. Obviously the more I press, the more voices I'll start using. That's 64 voices and I can take this to an extreme. You can see when we're starting to steal voices, at the, around 120 voices. If any of these layers, by the way, use unison, that's an additional voice per note in the single multi-sample layers and two additional voices for each additional wave sequencing unison layer. So up to you, I think the 64 voices on the Mark I were plenty despite that, but at 96 voices for the Mark II and 120 here, you've got a bit more power under the hood. Focusing on the Mark II for a moment, aside from the voice count, the Mark II feels exactly like the Mark I. It weighs the same, almost three kilos or seven pounds. It's the same light build, the same light keys, which are velocity and release sensitive, but don't have aftertouch. Other than that, the external differences between WaveState Mark II and the Mark I are minimal and superficial. The joystick is blue and there's this Wave State Mark II label. Beside that, it's got the same IO, same controls, same feel, just an increased voice count inside. There are obviously more hardware differences when it comes to the Wave State SE, which has five octaves instead of just three. It has a metal enclosure. 
Instead of plastic, it weighs almost three times as much, 8.6 kilos or around 18 pounds, and it also costs almost that much more. The keyboard on the SE definitely has a more premium feel than the three octave wave states, and it has channel or monophonic aftertouch. Doesn't have much travel, but uh, it's got actually pretty good control over aftertouch. The SE also comes with a hefty carrying case and apparently Korg will also come out with a slightly more expensive silver platinum version SE, but the final colors and layout weren't available as of the making of this video. Finally, in terms of physical differences, even though the panel layout is identical, the knobs feel maybe slightly more premium. The buttons feel identical to me. Maybe the screen is a little bit brighter, but yeah, the big and main difference is the key bed and the overall heft. Korg also created 15 new performances and more programs. Many of the existing programs have been adapted to support aftertouch, and they'll be making these available for the other wave states, but obviously you'll need to connect a key bed with aftertouch if you want to access the new aftertouch modulation. I mentioned this earlier, one more important thing you should know about the WaveState ecosystem is that Korg also makes a plug-in only version of WaveState, which is identical and preset compatible to the hardware synth sound-wise. Its prices sometimes fluctuate, especially around Black Friday, but as of the making of this video, the plugin costs $200 separately or $50 if you buy it alongside the hardware synth. WaveState native shouldn't be confused with the WaveState editor. Native is a software synth that makes sounds on its own and is software that runs on your computer or as a plugin in your DAW. The editor, on the other hand, turns your computer into a large screen for the hardware synth. It doesn't make any sounds on its own, but it does let you see almost everything that's happening on the hardware in real time. So say if I uh, swap presets, then with a bit of lag, the editor will be updated entirely to reflect that. Once presets load, by the way, things update much faster. So for example, you can see the filter cutoff, resonance, and so on. All of these match up pretty nicely. If I swap layers on the hardware, it'll swap layers in the editor. Most of the time I find it fast to do things with the onboard panel, but say to view what's going on in a wave sequence, this is a nice bird's eye view, but the on-screen display shows you a lot more detail. WaveState Native has an entirely different layout. You can sort of have them sometimes in sync. So for example, as I'm swapping set list presets here, you'll see that change on WaveState Native. The joystick controls are mirrored as are the overall performance knobs and the layer performance knobs as well. If I hop into layer view. But I think that's pretty much it. So anything else like the filter cutoff or any other parameters aren't synced up between the two. WaveState Native does give you a few things that the editor doesn't. For example, all these modulation displays, which are very useful, especially figuring out what the mod processors do when presets use them. There's this overall multi-layer view, which the editor doesn't have. On the other hand, you might need to do a bit more tabbing with WaveState Native compared to the editor. Another nice thing that WaveState Native has and that the editor doesn't is a full list of all the mod slots that are available within a patch. And as you can see, there are often quite a few of them and you can easily filter this by destinations or by sources. And there are a few sub filtering options. This is all extremely useful if you wanna explore the factory presets, which as you can see, can get quite modulation heavy. Now, even though you can't see a summary view of all the modulation within the editor, you can press individual steps or individual knobs to see whether they've got any modulations aside to them. You can add modulations to each of these controls separately when that's possible, like here. But there's no one single unified list on the editor. You can, however, browse through all the mods, sources, and destinations using the on-panel controls. The only problem is you can only view these one at a time, which can take a while, obviously, when you're seeing a single slot on a page. You can, however, filter these if you want. So if you hit mod and page minus, you can see filters 
that are similar to the filters we saw previously. So say, for example, if we only wanted to see modulations that are related to the sample performance knob, then we could filter by that. Then one more nice benefit of wave state native is that you have level meters for all four levels, which can be useful, I think, as well. Hopefully they'll add that say like on this screen or something. There is one more important difference between using the native plugin and the hardware. On WaveState hardware, you can only load up one user bank at a time, as opposed to I think pretty much as many banks, sample banks as you want on WaveState native. Just remember to save the bank for the plugin when you create it in Sample Builder. I won't cover Sample Builder because I covered that in a previous video linked below. Now a bank on the hardware can be quite big, up to 4.2 gigabytes. But since you can only load up one bank at a time, you'll need to use the standalone sample builder software if you want to bring in multiple samples from different sources. Say for example, if you bought a bank from a third party and want to combine it with your own samples. Okay, so that's what's new in the WaveState ecosystem. Since I feel like my other videos cover WaveState basics pretty well, I won't cover that again. But as usual, let's take a look at a few patch ideas and tips that dive a little deeper into what this thing can do. I'll start with the basics and what differentiates WaveState the most from other synths, and that's the fact that its sequencing lanes are almost entirely independent of each other, meaning that each lane can have a totally independent length, start, stop, and looping points, and other properties. The most basic but I think interesting use of this is making sounds and rhythmic patterns more complicated and sound less repetitive. So for example, in this pattern, I can use three different samples, which is cool, and say, run through three different pitches. But that's pretty repetitive compared to, say, four different pitches and three different samples. Which make the pattern immediately more interesting, and that applies to any of its other lanes. So to make a pattern like this on any other sequencer, I'd need to program 12 steps. Here you can do it in three and four, and if you make a change anywhere along the way, the pattern can get even more complex. Let's take a look at maybe another little example I prepared here. Yet another thing that's unique about WaveState is how it treats probabilities. Most sequencers these days have some sort of probability function that determines whether we'll hear a note played on that step or not. That's nice, but WaveState kicks it up a notch by skipping the entire step altogether. So for example, here in this patch, I've got this pattern repeating on layer B. It's gonna stay the same. Let's go into layer A. Same eight note pattern repeating every time. Now let's say go into the sample lane and go to step say six and go ahead into its probability and reduce that say to um, around 50%, go to step seven, do the same there. So now listen to the bass. Notice how now the bass line pattern became way more interesting, much less repetitive. As these two notes, six and seven, within the eight step sequence play only every two or three cycles, which creates a way more interesting and evolving pattern compared to what we had before. Let's take a listen to one of the factory presets. So here we've got a pattern of samples that plays very statically. But if I go to the timing lane and increase its length, pattern becomes way more interesting and unpredictable because the probability for some of the steps in the timing lane isn't 100%. So these two are 100%, but these are 31 and 29, which makes for this interesting pattern. The next thing that differentiates WaveState and is a great way to explore new ideas is the fact that it stores and gives you access to individual lane presets. So let me explain, for example, I'll go into just an init performance and let's maybe choose an entire initial program. Let's maybe go for, uh, oops, category, uh, where are we at, drums. Let's go for a drum category. And uh, 
start with this. Okay, so I've now loaded up an entire program, which means each of the lanes has a preset based on whatever's loaded up in that program. Now, if I wanted to say, change the sounds in this, the samples in this, I could go into the lane preset and choose a different set of sounds. And I could filter this um, by category as well. So let's stick with drums. Okay, let's say go for this. And then I could go into the timing lane and change that preset. So now the sample lane stays the same, but the timing changes completely, which generates an entirely different groove. Until you land on something that resonates with you and you can then use that as a starting point. So this is an entirely different feature from the randomized feature, which often can produce unpredictable in a bad way results. I think this is a super powerful feature that I haven't seen in any other synth. Obviously, no other instrument has this concept of lanes. So having presets per lane is a nice way to complement that. By the way, another sub tip in this respect, sometimes a lane preset can also load up a knob modulation. So for example, here, I can control, I think, uh, yeah, here we go, this knob the loop of the sampling like this. So what's cool about this is that this performance control loaded up along with the lane preset. Let's take a look at a few other interesting ideas I found in some of the factory presets. So let's take a listen to this patch, which has quite a few gems in it. For example, notice that glockenspiel pattern. Let's maybe shut off all the layers except layer B. Notice that pattern happens only every few repetitions. The reason this happens, if I go into the mod matrix and filter by generator, oops, here we go, pan LFO, enter. You'll see that the pan LFO is modulating the loop's endpoint. Now, another nice thing they added here is that Aftertouch also acts as a controller for this. So if I press down on a key, that pattern will happen. The glockenspiel pattern will happen regardless of when it was supposed to happen using the panel FO. This is, of course, just one layer. Let's listen to it within the context of the entire patch. Same thing by the way, also happens in layer A. Notice it running through the first steps of the pitch pattern. And that last part plays only every few cycles based on when the pitch LFO is high. Anyway, the whole point here was to show that you can modulate loop starts and loop ends for really nice creative effects. Another cool use for loop start and end points are just as fills, so we've got this pattern here. I can go to the sample track and make it shorter, longer, or start somewhere else. Explore fills, explore different patterns. I don't know of any other instrument you can improvise with this way. While we hear one more nice use of start and end points. So notice what's going on in layer C here. Get two first long steps in the timing lane, then this repetition with the last three of five steps in the timing lane. For layer C, there's obviously a lot of other madness going on here. Nice use of start point versus loop start points. Next up, yet another set of modulation destinations in wave state that I've not found anywhere else is the ability to modulate specific values in particular steps in a sequence. So if you've heard me say earlier that there are thousands of modulation destinations here, it's because in each of the steps you can choose 
not all, but almost all of these parameters and modulate them as destinations, say for example, the octave of this particular sample. So in this pattern, the pitch knob modulates the pitch of specific steps. So if we hear that a knob is doing an interesting thing and we want to know what that thing is. If we're using wave state native, our life is slightly easier. If not, again, we can hop into the mod matrix and here we go, filter by, in this case, mod knobs. Now, spoiler, if I go into the pitch performance knob and hit enter, we'll see it's controlling the octave of step A1 and the octave of step A3. I think that's all it does. Yeah, here we go. Just those two. Now this is a manual controller, but of course you can assign an LFO to this or an envelope or anything else you like. Now, one more thing you might notice, the timing here is a little bit wonky, even though our timing lane only has one step. So how could the timing be changing? The answer is, if we hit that step to look at it, the likely culprit is, spoiler, this multiplier. If I go into the mod matrix, and let's go ahead and go to synth and effects, timing lane, with I have to admit a bit of paging that's obviously nicer in the software, you can see that the a1, timing step A1, duration multiplier is being modulated by the pan LFO. Let's let me take a look at one more cool example. In this beat, I'm controlling the levels of different steps using these knobs, modulating the trim parameter, meaning the level of individual steps in each of these sequences. Okay, let's take a look at another unique feature, which is per lane note advance Again, I think nothing like this exists anywhere else. The idea here, for example, let's take a look at something simple, the pitch lane. Every time I press a note, I advance to the next step in the pitch sequence, which transposes the note that I press. I think it's a very interesting way to explore chords. So here I'm pressing the exact same notes, but getting a different chord that's harmonically related every time I press the same set of notes. Obviously, I've set this to relatively harmonic intervals, as you can see on screen, or if I just go through these, you can see the semitones differences in each step, and I could apply note advance to any of the other lanes as well, say, for example, to swap the sample if I wanted per press, which would sound weird, but works. And I think this sounds particularly nice when done across multiple layers. Where here, some of the lanes are transposed and some aren't. It sounds even nicer, I think, when combined with a crossfade of different instrument samples. Next thing, which is pretty rare, but I did see on some other synths, I'll go back to this patch, and that's that you can have pitch transpositions adhere to scale. So in this patch, I've got this pitch pattern, but it's set to conform to, in this case, the minor pentatonic scale. I could change that to anything I wanted, and I'll need to play a note out of the scale for the pitches to be different. Now imagine that with any other type of pitch modulation or any other mod sources trying to manipulate these pitch steps and the scale keeping everything more and less in order. Okay, let's talk about the shape lane for a bit. There are quite a few things you can do with this. Most intuitively shapes that you create volume envelopes, different volume envelopes on a per step basis but also ratchets. And, uh, you can choose any number of these shapes. So that's cool, but one interesting property of uh, 
the shapes in the shape lane. So we can modulate the phase of a shape in the shape lane. So we are now modulating the phase of this shape. But let's maybe change it to a different shape. And mess with that phase. Or maybe something else. So that's how you can use phase as a envelope or sound design or sound shaping tool. Let's take maybe one more look or listen to how useful a shape lane can be as a sound design tool. Let's look at the craziness here. It's all happening here. in layer A, with the shape lane doing a lot of the heavy lifting. Then final tip, if you ever want to understand the mod processors, so that's these guys here beyond the mod matrix, two mod sources that have a bunch of different options and um, aren't really visualized, I highly recommend taking a look at WaveState Native and just going through a few of the patches that use them. So for example, in this patch, you can see how Aftertouch is being controlled by this mod processor to smoothen changes in it so I could reduce the attack and decay for more immediate changes in the mod processor or slow them down to get more gradual controls. So that's just one of the mod processors. They can get quite more complex. So I think having this little graph here visualize what's going on is a great way to learn what each of the mod processors does. By the way, while we're here, something that doesn't appear in the list of mod sources and destinations is if you choose a uh, source through here. So if you ever have a patch where something's going on, you're not sure exactly quite what, and it's not coming up, in the list here on the mod list or in the mod list here, you just might be looking at a patch which uses a mod processor that in turn uses another controller inside it. Okay, let's talk about pros and cons of wave state looking back now that it's been out for a few years. On the pros side, if this type of synthesis and rhythmic creativity interests you, there's nothing out there like it in hardware form. And even in software form, I think this competes very nicely with other generative style tools. If you're tired of just reaching out to the filter cutoff, no offense, as your main sound design tool, exploring wave state as a rhythmic texture and sound generator is a treat. Value-wise, probably most attractive now on the hardware side is a used wave state Mark I, which really isn't that different than the Mark II. And if you really find yourself missing the extra voices, you'll likely be able to sell it for more or less what you paid for it used and get the Mark II. One thing I think missing in the lineup is a desktop only version. Further on the pros side, WaveState comes with plenty of factory content that you can mix, match, and customize, especially once you start exploring the different lane presets. The over 250 multi-lane performance presets are great, but the fact that you've got sub presets for layers, and then within that, sub presets for lanes means that you can pick and choose and grab and remix these presets in very interesting ways. And if that isn't enough, then the very detailed randomized feature can give you even further out of the box ideas. The choice of samples here is also excellent along with the filter and effect options, which I didn't even talk about in this video and I cover extensively elsewhere, gives you a lot to play with out of the box. And if that's not enough, you can easily load up your own multi-sampled kits and instruments. On the cons side, like I said in my initial review, WaveState's small screen is definitely a negative. While you can access all of its features using these buttons and the screen, and I actually frequently prefer to use these to a mouse on the software, nothing beats actually seeing the content of the lanes as you can on the editor, as opposed to just seeing these representations on screen. Obviously going through all the mod slots is way more convenient in wave state native. It's hard to argue against seeing more, and there's certainly a lot going in here. 
it's not like there isn't any space on the panel for a larger screen. Obviously, it would have cost more, but I think within the context of this, and even the less expensive ones, paying a bit extra to just ditch the computer and the editor altogether would make this a much more fun standalone experience. Beside that, WaveState still has a few carried over cons from the previous versions. In particular, there are no per layer reverb sends. It's just one global dry wet mix for all four layers. Connectivity is the same across the wave states, so you don't have separate outputs per layer if you want it. And you can't sample into this, only load up samples from your computer. All that said, if you enjoy taking sonic and rhythmic journeys and want to have a dialogue with an instrument that will throw back at you out of the box ideas, WaveState, in my opinion, is as good as it gets. So that's it for WaveState SC, Mark II, Mark I, and Native. I've got quite a few multi-samples for this on my Patreon, as well as my ever-expanding book of electronic music ideas, tips, and tricks. Hit like if this was useful. Ring the YouTube bell below if you want to make sure you don't miss the next one. Thanks for watching.